How's it hanging, folks? It's Andrew here from MAO Magic, and I'm here with the new Plex app for Apple TV. Now, the Plex app technically has been available for Apple TV for quite some time. Unfortunately, you just needed a second-gen Apple TV and one of those jailbreaks that will allow you to install third-party applications. Now, this is actually a first-party application from Plex installed from the App Store on the new fourth-generation Apple TV. When you launch it, you will see your channels up at the top that you have added. It'll show you, for my sake here, it'll recently added television and recently added movies right here in your home screen. I'm not going to go through how to actually set up Plex on your computer, but when you have that computer set up, you sign into Plex, and it'll immediately be discovered inside of the application. So I have a couple different channels set up here. I have one for movies and one for TV shows. So when I go into movies here, you can see I had all those different categories for the movies. I can go to any one in particular. I can choose those few play, Marcus watch, and settings options, as well as all these different related movies. And content-wise, yeah, those are all pretty close, and all this is just being done by Plex. You can see it has some of the ratings and other information at the top. If I go into settings, I can see the audio, manage subtitles, and even choose the quality for that specific video. Now, these video streams don't have to be in like the MP4 like they normally do. They can be in many different formats, and they will be converted on the fly as you play them on your Apple TV. Now, Discovery is actually pretty neat here. It allows you to view all your movies in many different ways. It'll consort by certain like actors or directors that pull up, um, any that have recently been viewed, or any ones that are really highly rated. So on top here, we have recently released, and it'll go by actual release date and show you the ones they have added, which ones are the new ones. You can sort by collection here as well, those other different options at the top. So if we hop into our TV channel, you will see a lot of the same options that we had on the movie side. So we have recently added TV, uh, recently aired TV, which is a little bit different. So these are just the most recent episodes, not the full like show itself, but the recent episodes of that, and as well as pick up where you left off. So if you were watching certain shows, it'll present those here. This one I particularly like that you can just pick up on a show where you left off if you had started watching it. You can start watching any shows that you have, rediscover ones that you have already watched and want to pick up again, and then they even sort them by network. So I have more from NBC here, and I can even open up SNL. I can see all these seasons right below. Playing one is very simple. I can simply hit play right above, and it'll automatically play that episode. You can even shuffle the episode. So if you kind of like the live TV experience and want to just watch random episodes of SNL that may be playing, you can shuffle them. And simply hitting play, and it'll start playing on your Apple TV. You can use many of the Siri commands, such as like, what did she say, and go back a little bit, or even fast forward for a few minutes. Now, I really, really do like the discovery options here. It's really neat to sort through all of your media this way. It's very similar to doing it on Netflix, but it's everything that you have stored on your computer. So if we go into You, Me, and the Apocalypse here, not only will you see the actual show information here on the top, and this is for an episode, so it's only showing me this, but if I jump to the actual series, then I can actually go down on the page and I can see all these different options. So I can see how many seasons of the show, just the first one. I can see all the related TV shows that are similar to that in content. I can see more from that network. I can see more from that specific actor. I can see more from another specific actor that's actually in the show. And these are all pulling from ones that I have, so these will only show up if I actually have that. Now, new content, when you add it to the folders, it'll automatically resync that, say, every day, uh, or you can do it manually, and then it'll simply keep showing up in your Apple TV. So while this is not an actual like hardware product per se, we will go ahead and break it down between pros and cons. The discovery is really neat. I really like being able to see all my media in all these different ways and kind of see different uh, threads that I can jump between. It is finally native, so you don't actually have to jailbreak your Apple TV to get Plex on there, or maybe use a half-assed one on a PlayStation or an Xbox, which have been recently updated and are much better now. It is completely free for all everyone, not just the paying members of the Plex ecosystem. And lastly, it'll work with any format, so you don't have to have it in MP4. On the flip side of everything, if we take a look at the cons, there's still no voice search, so Siri API is not open yet, so you cannot search your content using your voice. There's no real smart curation, so Netflix is often like done with its analytics on the back end to recommend stuff. Here, it's more on your end and with your content, so this could be good or bad. And lastly, there are third-party apps, which are both a pro and a con. So other apps are out there, such as Simplex, which are paid apps, um, but they can be better than the native one. If you have any questions, throw them up in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and keep these videos coming. If you have any other suggestions, throw them up in the comments as well. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.